Happy New Year and welcome to Government at Work. I'm your presenter, Adina Johnson. In the headlines, Monswat's Remote Workers Program has been launched. Applications are now being accepted. And AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine will be rolled out in February. These and other stories after this message. Monswat's Digital Remote Workers Program is now accepting applications from individuals who wish to live and work from Monswat. This follows the program's launch at a ceremony on Friday, January 29th. As we will hear in this report from Fiona Alexander-Smith, individuals who are accepted under the program will be granted a 12-month visa in the first instance. The government of Montserrat launched its 12-month remote worker stamp on Friday, January 29th, and persons are invited to apply now on www.montserratremoteworker.com. The stamp will give professionals and entrepreneurs the opportunity to experience a work-life vacation balance by trading the hustle and bustle of city life for the peace and tranquility of island life. The Premier, Honorable Joseph Farrell, in his remarks, invited persons overseas to start applying under the program. As we know, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought with it numerous challenges to our personal, recreational, and professional lives. But it has also created a unique opportunity for individuals to work from any place they choose. And we hope that Monstrat will be their place of choice. To those of you looking for a home away from home, we are delighted to offer Monstrat as your new workplace. I now invite you to start sending in your applications for Monstrat's remote workers stamp. The Deputy Premier of Montserrat, Dr. The Honorable Samuel Joseph, added that the need for this type of program was propelled by the COVID-19 pandemic. The, the world is changing and we have to change with the world. We can't just keep on doing the things that we normally do. We have to find new ways of looking at things. And as the Minister of Labor, when he looked around and he realized how work was changing, that people are no longer content to be working in an office, they're no longer content with their commute. They're finding because of connectivity and new technologies, they have come to the conclusion, I can work at home. What COVID did was even to make it accelerate that process where your companies were forced to, the, to let the workers work from home. Governments was forced to allow their workers to work from home. So that process has accelerated and I realized that people are saying, 
Why go to the office? Why deal with all that cram stuff when I could have my computer? Some of my stuff does not involve me sitting down at this. I can sit down, as Mr. Morton pointed out, call my strategic plan, get a team together. Why do I need to be in office? And then what happened after people realized, but if I'm not in my office, why do I need to be in my apartment in my country? Why can't I go someplace else that's more calm, that's more serene, that gives me a better work-life balance to get my work done, to spend more time with my family? Why do it in the country where I am when I can have the entire world to go to. So different countries realized that and went about launching this remote workers program. So we looked at ourselves in Monsoor and said, but why can't Monsoor do that too? We have connectivity, we are advancing, we have a lot of projects going in terms of our fiber, we have a peaceful country, we have villas, we have beaches, why can't Monsoor do that? So the ministry decided that is the direction we are going to go down and to pull it off did take a lot of coordination by a lot of different people to actually get it to the stage that we are finally at. Director of Tourism Warren Solomon added that the project is symbolic of the government of Montserrat's desire to give the economy a chance to grow. In the early days of the pandemic, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, rightly said that this disease was not going to go away just like that anytime soon, and that we in the Caribbean, and by extension other parts of the world, had to learn to coexist with COVID-19. Truer words could not be said. And so today's launch of the Remote Workers Program by the Ministry of Communications, Works, Energy and Labor represents a significant step by the government of Montserrat to acknowledge that efforts must be made to give the economy a fighting chance to restart and to grow. Director of Tourism, Warren Solomon. The 12-month remote worker stamp offers new opportunities for anyone whose work is location independent. And the government of Montserrat has been working to ensure that the process to apply is as simple as possible to facilitate travel. Fees are 500 U.S. dollars for individuals and 750 U.S. dollars for individuals accompanied by a maximum of three family members and 250 U.S. dollars for each additional family member. The stamp is valid for 12 months but may be reapplied for and applicants will not be liable to pay Montserrat income tax. The Montserrat Remote Workers Program is led by the Ministry of Communication, Works, Energy and Labor in collaboration with the Montserrat Tourism Division. Viona Alexander-Smith for Government at Work News. Montserrat is expected to receive its first shipment of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine in the first week of February. The Ministry of Health and Social Services said that the vaccine will then be available for distribution shortly after. Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Brian McCassim said the vaccine, which was developed in the United Kingdom, was sent by the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, FCDO, and further explained how the immune system works when it encounters a vaccine. And um, this type of um, vaccine is the type um, which we call, it's uh, some sort of, um, it's an attenuated virus. It's, uh, some sort of, um, it's an attenuated virus, modified virus, to stimulate your immune system. So that is the type that we are getting. So you said, you mentioned the word virus. Does yes. that mean that it's a COVID virus that they are giving us to help no. stimulate our immune system? They're not giving us COVID virus. They're giving us a virus called adenovirus, which has been um, genetically modified um, to make it non-virulent, meaning should, it wouldn't cause disease, but then um, there is a, a gene, uh, what you call it, an expression of one of the a gene, uh, what you call it, an expression of one of the spikes, which is the S1, which would uh, stimulate your immune system, which is identical to the S um, antigen on the surface of, of the COVID virus. So when, you, when the body gets it, that is how it functions. It will stimulate your immune system with the first dose to make your body ready so that if at some point in time you get the infection, the body will react effectively in defending the person who gets the infection. Director of Primary Health Care and Epidemiologist Dr. Dorothea Hazel-Blake explains how the vaccine works in relation to the COVID-19 virus. Just so that people understand that that is how not just the COVID-19 vaccine, but vaccines in general, as Dr. Kasim said, it, it works on the basis of memory. 
But if you've been exposed to something, you 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 know you know something already, and you let's say you you learn to drive. You've been accustomed, but you've only been accustomed to driving a, an automatic vehicle. And if you haven't driven one for a while, you go back into the vehicle. You almost instinctively, you know what to do because your memory kicks in and says, "Oh yes, I've done this before." Mm -hmm. Similarly, because your body would have been introduced to the fragment that is incorporated into this vaccine. The next time it, your body encounters the COVID virus, as in now actually trying to give you an infection, it says, oh, yes, I know this I know this virus. This is what I did the last time. Mm -hmm. So I do it again. And so the response is much quicker. And you can result in a very mild infection, if any, or no infection. No infection. Discussions on Montserrat's 2021-2022 budget allocations between the Government of Montserrat and the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, FCDO, ended on Wednesday, January 27, 2021. The financial aid mission was conducted virtually from January 18. Polly Sorina has more details in this report. The annual mission allows for an agreement to be made on the budget allocation and for key discussions on the government of Montserrat's strategic plans and progress being made on priority areas. The discussion also allows for a review of the 2020-2021 budget, including issues raised during the year. Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office Economic Advisor of Financial Aid, Shailaja Anam Raju, noted that the economic situation has been challenging this year due to COVID-19 lockdowns in the UK. She said she hopes the COVID-19 support provided by the UK was helpful in reducing the impact of the pandemic on the local economy. The situation is undoubtedly what's been um, sort of most challenging for this year. And, um, and in the UK, it's been challenging because of lockdown. Um, government of Montserrat has come out very early and quite ahead. Uh, and it, it's, it's notable that their estimates most recently for a reduction in economic activity has been um, in, in the order of 7 to 8% reduction. Um, and, and that means that it's a particularly challenging year. But I think my, my, you know, one of the main takeaways is that um, it's there, there's quite a lot to be positive as well. Um, we, the UK, the UK has provided an additional uh, 3.5 million pounds worth of COVID support, and I really hope that that's helped reduce some of the scarring to the economy that a pandemic of this sort can do. Um, clearly, as months have gone by, the resilience of government Montserrat's revenues have have shown through. Premier and Minister of Finance, the Honourable Joseph E. Farrell, in his remark during the closing press conference, said it is vital that the UK government and the government of Montserrat work together for the good of the people. We understand the situation as it exists. We understand that we depend on the UK for assistance and that they too are going through some difficult times. We understand that. But we also understand that as people in Montserrat, as politicians, we are accountable and have a responsibility to ensure that the UK fund, UK aid given to us is used to the benefit of everyone. We believe that we must work together in partnership. I get the sense from the team over the past couple of days that there is this need for us to work together. And I believe that they will do and we will do that, work together for the advancement and good of all of us. It's a partnership between the UK and the Montserrat government and we will continue to engage with each other over the coming months to ensure that we satisfy the needs of one another. Reporting for Government at Work, I am Paulisa Reiner.
Munsrat continues to advance efforts towards the use of renewable energy sources as outlined in the targets under the Energy Policy 2016 to 2030. As part of the plans towards realizing the energy policy's power to change goals, officials on Tuesday, January 26, broke ground at Lookout to signal the start of the 750 kilowatt solar voltaic and battery storage project. Once completed, this project, along with the 250 kilowatt solar facility in Braids, will generate approximately 10% of the island's power requirement from the sun. Premier Honorable Joseph Farrell said it is essential for Montserrat to further reduce the use of fossil fuels to protect our environment. This tropical isle is blessed with wind, sun and geothermal. To this end, my administration is determined to make Montserrat 100% renewable energy by a certain time. I wouldn't say a date, can you hold us to that? Once it is achieved, it will also contribute to the expansion of growth of our economy encouraging light manufacturing and other private sector industries. Project manager Owen Lewis provides an overview of the scope of the project. The project consists of three main elements. The generating element, and everybody knows that, that that's the solar PV panels. We will have a total of 2,000 panels. Each panel is going to be 435 watts in, in, in power. We've got the energy, electrical energy storage element and the integration element, which is how the project will actually connect to the MUL grid. This project has three primary objectives. The first is to provide, as Mr. Patterson and PS has said before me, um, power, renewable energy power, and this project, this element of the project will provide between 30 and 35 percent of peak load on a daily basis for a typical Montserrat sunny day. Second objective is to increase resiliency. This project will be capable of operating in two modes, the normal modes when it's connected to the grid, and it will be just another electricity generating asset of MUL. However, if for whatever reason, electricity is disrupted from the main braids power station, the system has the capability to go into what is called islanded or off-grid mode. And there are some critical facilities that will get electricity when that happens, depending on the estimated duration of the outage. These facilities are the Glendon Hospital, DMCA, the Lookout Primary School, the Warden Support Unit, and the John A. Osborne Airport. If you are a resident and you happen to live between here and the system to get us back to the airport, when electricity goes, you will be quite fortunate that you will still have electricity. So some residents although they're not critical facilities, just because of how the grid is structured, will also benefit from this. The Montserrat Utilities Limited, MUL, is the Energy Ministry's technical partner in terms of development and implementation. Manager of the MUL, Kendall Lee, said the company is committed to transitioning the way electricity is produced on island from fossil fuels to harnessing on island renewable energy sources. The company recently completed an integrated resource plan for its water, wastewater and electricity sectors and the electricity component of the plan outlines a roadmap towards moving away from these fossil fuels which have to be imported at very high cost and are detrimental to the environment to developing renewable energy electricity production facilities with solar and wind combined with energy storing being considered the low-hanging fruit. We are therefore excited to see the commencement of the construction of this 750 kilowatt solar PV and battery storage facility. Governor's Excellency Andrew Pierce also delivered remarks at the groundbreaking ceremony while the Energy Minister Dr. The Honorable Samuel Joseph delivered a feature address focusing on the power to change theme of the energy policy.
The project is funded by the European Union EDF 11. The Ministry of Finance and Economic Management has procurement oversight and the Energy Ministry is responsible for the project development and implementation. Salt Energy Company is the engineering procurement and construction contractor responsible for designing and implementing the project. The project is expected to be completed by June. The government has given itself a timeline of September 2021 for the completion of the Montserrat Secondary School Improvement Project. Confirmation has come from the Premier, Honorable Joseph Farrell. The works include restoration of blocks L and M and at the MSS with improved staff room and library facilities. Mr. Farrell says that the buildings would include access for vulnerable persons. In addition to, to what we're doing, we're also making provision. We have um, mandated that provision should be made for vulnerable persons, like wheelchair access or that kind of thing for those two blocks. But however they can make it, they must put in place some form of access for vulnerable persons. Children may have on crutches or, or wheelchair, whatever it is, we need to have, they, because they need to continue the education even if they're impaired in one way or other. So that is really on its way. I'm saying to you that we want to have this project completed by September of 2021. So that the new school year, we should have the staff room ready, the block LM ready, and the library for, 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 this, for children to, um, to occupy. We are not going to accommodate any T111 classroom for children. It is not sustainable. It's going to cost you too much money, and uh, we have to have some permanent. And nobody's going to get us to accept anything that is not permanent, not in our term. We're definitely not going to do it. It has to be acceptable for us and for our children, because T111 bill is going to cost you more to repair them, and at the end, you end up not having anything. Put the concrete, concrete buildings down, and then they're basically for life, except your maintenance, like your painting and other things. So we're not accepting anything like that. So, and, as a matter of fact, there's no discussion whatsoever. We're not entering discussion whatsoever on any T111 buildings. Absolutely none. The Premier, Honorable Joseph Farrell. Construction work has commenced at the John A. Osborne Airport to build a modern air traffic control tower. The air traffic control tower project is a critical infrastructure project under the Capital Investment Program for Resilient Economic Growth, CIPREG, and is being managed by the Ministry of Communication, Works, Labor and Energy. While delivering remarks at the groundbreaking ceremony on January 5th, Minister of Works Dr. the Honorable Samuel Joseph noted that the construction of the new tower is symbolic of Montserrat's progression despite Ninja challenges. Areas. So as we start 2021, it is very good that we are starting with this project. Not only does it signify that we are now rebuilding Montserrat in terms of our infrastructure, and not only does it symbolize the guidance, guidance of where we are going to go into 2021, despite the rough seas that we have in 2020, we are now having a structure to guide us going forward. So following the construction of this tower, we have all these other projects that have been spoken about. We are now going to resurface the, the runway. The Premier said not to hold him to it, but we have the hospital right on the other side here to do. We have our educational facilities to upgrade, and we have all these other projects ongoing. So this tower is a guiding light of where we see Montserrat going in the future and to also warn us of the dangers that are coming. When completed, the tower will be the tallest building on Montserrat, as explained by the director of the Public Works Department, Rawlson Patterson, who highlighted the journey to this point. This tower upon completion will stand as one of the tallest concrete buildings ever to be constructed in Montserrat in this new dispensation. It will feature a total height of approximately 60 feet and would cover over five stories tall. And it will include a state-of-the-art air traffic control cabin at the top. With the provisions for the installation of an, of an elevator in the future. For me, this speaks volume as the structure will stand as a beacon for all to see and a pillar that signifies that the strength and resilience of the people of Montserrat. The journey has been a long one, starting in 2015 with the aeronautical study. In 2017, there was the submission of a business case for the financing of the project, followed by the design works, 
the tender processes, and the contract negotiations. Critical thinking and foresight allowed us to purchase the prefabricated cabin prior. And it is already here on the site, ready to be installed once the concrete shaft is completed. On November 19, 2020, the Gallery Group signed the contract for the construction of the air traffic control tower. Adrian Galloway of the Gallery Group spoke about the importance of this project and the company's commitment to delivering value. The commencement of this construction facility is a tangible demonstration of the commitment of the government and people of Montserrat towards improving access to the island. And also it is a significant investment in our infrastructure. Over the duration of this project, we anticipate that we will put in place over 170 cubic yards of concrete. We'll put in place perhaps over uh, in excess of 35,000 pounds of concrete, and we'll be putting in place, you know, a lot of other materials, fixtures and fittings. Even with the aggressive construction schedule and all the other factors that influence the rate of construction of any construction project, it is our pledge to work diligently to ensure that the handover dates is not missed. It is also our pledge to ensure that the quality of the workmanship and all the finishes are of a high standard. The project is being implemented over a period of six months. Stay with us. Government at Work continues after this break. Germs are tiny little things that can cause disease and make us very sick. They are so tiny that we cannot see them, but they are everywhere. Everything we touch causes germs to get on our hands, but when they get into our bodies, that is when they can make us very sick. That's why it is very important for us to wash our hands often. The Ministry of Health, Montserrat, has taught our primary school children how to wash their hands properly. Do you know how? You must always use soap to wash your hands. Wash for at least 20 seconds, ensuring that you wash between the fingers, under the fingernails and up to the wrists. Rinse thoroughly with running water and dry with a paper towel. Washing well and often is a hallmark of good health and reduces the risk of contracting and spreading infectious diseases. This message was brought to you by the Ministry of Health, Montserrat. The Premier Honourable Joseph Farrell said his government will be looking at innovative ways to boost the island's economy and to protect residents against the economic shocks and the negative impacts of the coronavirus. The Premier noted that the challenges experienced in 2020 because of COVID-19 impacted every sector of society. He emphasized that his administration is determined to provide the necessary support to limit long-term economic damage and protect the well-being of people. 2020 was a challenging year for all of us, both our, our health and our economy, our education system. Every facet of our society suffered in 2021 as a result of COVID. We look forward to 2021 with a sense of optimism, a sense of hope. And I can assure you that your government will work assiduously during this year to strengthen the economy and to ensure that we continue to protect you, the citizens of Montserrat, your health, as long as COVID is still in the air. We will do everything within our powers to make sure that we create some jobs. We'll make sure that we look after your health and anything that is needed to protect your health and the health of the nation, we will do it. So I want to assure you that this year, with your help, we will work together to make 2021 a much better year than it was for all of us in 2020. A study to determine the appliances and equipment with the highest energy demand on Montserrat will begin in February. The study will be conducted over a two-month period as part of the energy unit's activities to promote energy efficiency and conservation. The study will be conducted in the residential sector and aims to identify areas of energy efficiency, energy efficiency and conservation improvement. The unit will have 10 participants who will receive a free walkthrough and residential energy audit to highlight areas of inefficiency and savings options. And these participants will be split into two groups. The groups will consist of five individuals whose energy usage is below and five whose use is above 200 kilowatt per hour per month. 
The unit will require permission to access each participant's home and in their presence install energy usage recording equipment to gather data on their energy consumption patterns. This will be done in tandem with the Electrical Inspectorate Division from the Physical Planning Unit to ensure equipment is safely installed and all electrical work is in full compliance with the unit's regulations. The equipment will be installed for a total of five days, preferably beginning on a Friday and ending on a Wednesday. Once the study is completed, participants will be provided with an individual assessment of their energy consumption and ways in which it can be reduced. This data will also be used to produce a generalized report, a generalized report highlighting household appliances with the highest energy demand and promoting the uptake of energy efficient appliances and equipment. Thank you for tuning in to Government at Work. Join us on the first Monday of next month for our next Government News Package. I am Adina Johnson and on behalf of the GIU Government at Work production team, thank you for watching.